This is part two to my M5 R1 transmission rebuild. We are going to be installing all of these parts inside of the tail housing today. I recommend standing it upright for this procedure. Start off by taking a brass punch and making sure the bearings are seated. Place the bearing retainer with the arrow to the main shaft. Thread lock all six bearing retainer bolts. The torque spec for these retainer bolts are between 13 and 19 foot pounds. I'm going to set mine to 13. Take some assembly goo and rub it on the ball bearing. Going over that ball bearing, we have the input spacer with a little indentation here that will slip right over that ball. Over that spacer, we have our fifth gear counter shaft. We're gonna lubricate on the interior here, as well as this tapered section where the synchronizer sits. Now we have our fifth gear that goes on the main shaft, a little lubrication here. Now we have our split needle bearing. This next step is four in one, it's a little bit tricky. Inside of the shift fork, there is a shaft, a spring with a ball. On this shaft, there are three grooves cut. You're gonna want that ball and the spring to be lined up in the middle groove. For this synchronizer, make sure this part of the hub that sticks out the most is facing down. Your identification indentation is facing up. Your keys with the teeth are facing in towards the center of the hub. And your springs are on both sides and they're connecting towards keys. Lubricate all of the teeth, as well as both sides of the hub. Lubricate the inner portion of this shaft, the spring, the ball, and the inside of this fork. While holding the synchronizer on the bottom and the shift fork right here, go ahead and slide that down. This retaining bolt gets torqued down to 15 foot-pounds, and don't forget to add some gasket maker. Now you have two split washers that go right above the hub of the synchronizer, followed by a thrust washer retainer. Go ahead and lubricate your three groove brass synchronizer. Next up is our shaft counter lever assembly. Take the shaft with the O-ring, slide it through. Grab your lever and put the smaller portion inside of the shift fork. Now comes the spacer, followed by a snap ring.
For this keeper bolt, add some Loctite and torque her down to six foot pounds. The spacer sleeve goes over the main shaft, lubricate both sides. In goes the counter shaft reverse gear. Go ahead and lubricate this tapered portion here that touches the brass synchronizer. Inside of that goes two needle bearings. Up next, we have the reverse gear for the main shaft. This tapered portion goes down. We're gonna put this reverse gear idler assembly together. Take this copper plated thrust washer with the tang, lubricate right here. Slide it over the shaft. The tang will sit in this notch. Up next, lubricate this needle bearing. Now slide over the reverse idle gear. Lubricate the second copper plated thrust washer. Last piece is our snap ring. Go ahead and line up this threaded hole to the hole in the case. For this retaining bolt, add an ample amount of gasket maker. I could not find the torque specifications for this bolt, but I torqued mine down to 50 foot pounds. If you know the torque specification for this bolt, please put it in the comments. Thanks. Back to the counter shaft, we have a thrust washer. On top of that goes our counter shaft bearing, followed by our stake nut. This nut is 32 millimeters. If you don't have that, one and one quarter will fit as well. The torque specification for this nut is 94 to 144 foot pounds. I'm gonna aim somewhere in the middle around 125. Before torquing on this nut, go over here and slide both synchronizers down in gear. To be able to torque these two nuts, I threw some wood screws with washers inside of the bell housing straight into my workbench. make it easier to stake this nut in whatever orientation that you want go ahead and put the gears back into neutral and spin the main shaft to where wherever that groove is easiest for you to stake it in once you have it where you want lock the gears back in place For the output shaft bearing, I'm gonna slide it over and then seat this bearing down by tightening the nut. The last piece that holds this transmission together is this 55 millimeter stake nut. I found it quite difficult to find a socket that can go over the shaft and to be able to tighten this down with my torque wrench. The torque specifications are 160 to 202 foot pounds. I found two suitable options. I have this 55 millimeter impact socket that I got on Amazon for around $15. My idea was to cut it in half and weld the pipe to make it an extended socket. That way I can connect my three quarter inch torque wrench to this. To cut that and weld it all up would take a while. So I'm on a bit of time crunch here. My next best option is this 24 inch adjustable crescent wrench. I think this will do the job just fine.
one last ball bearing. Next is your speedometer gear. One of these three slots will fit right over that ball bearing. Holding that speedometer gear in place, we have this snap ring. The last piece before the tail housing is this rubber driveline bumper. For the tail housing, make sure that cup is in there with the keeper in that notch. Apply gasket maker to every bolt.